Okay, so we're more or less set up now. So all I need to do is to, let's close these down. Let's get another tab up and close these down without closing the whole window. So we go to Linux from scratch. Go to the website. And you can either click here or click up here to get to the actual Linux from scratch part of the website. Read online. And what we want to do is concentrate on the stable release, which is the new release that's just been published. There probably isn't any stable errata at the moment, being as it's so new and it redirects you to the security advisories anyway. So you can see it's released today. You can see the date down the bottom there, 1st of September 2022. So as expected, there's nothing. Um, but if you're building this sometime after the 1st of September, then you might want to consider that. If you're just do, doing this as an educational process, which is the prime reason for Linux from scratch, then again, you probably it's probably not important to um, take any notice of the uh, security advisories, advisories. However, if you're building Linux from scratch as something you might want to use in the future, then um, yeah, I would thoroughly recommend, recommend taking note of the security, security advisories and any errata that there as well. So you can see there's some security notices there for previous versions as well. And you can see this link takes us to the previous page that we were just on. Uh, let me just make this a little bit bigger, make it easier to read. So go back and the link we want is this stable LFS link. And this will take us to the current version. As you can see, it was published today. In fact, it was published several hours ago. And if we start at the beginning. Now, I always recommend that you get hold of the book. Don't just jump in. If you've never done this before, get hold of the book and start reading the book. Just, you know, treat it like a an ordinary book and start reading it. And certainly read the preface, introduction, preparing for the build, these sections two, three, and four. And even then, yeah, you can read this. This is quite technical about how the uh, tool chain is built up, how, how the transfer from the current running system, which is the Gen 2 Live USB, is made, how the transfer is made from that to the new Linux from scratch system. Um, and even read, especially some of the more complicated packages, such as GCC, go through the whole book, reading, getting an idea of what packages are installed, how the packages are built. Um, it might seem a little bit tedious on, on the outset, but by reading the book, you get an idea, you get an understanding of what's being done, the order of things, why things are being done. Um, and, you know, as I go through, I'll, I'll explain things and hopefully the things I explain will make a bit more sense or maybe something I'll say will make a bit more sense that you've already read in the book. If you just go in head first, it's going to be overwhelming um, there'll probably be a lot of things that won't make sense um, so yeah I do thoroughly recommend um, going through the book and reading it at least once maybe a couple of times go back second or third time reread something that you didn't quite get the first time so there's a forward here of how Linux from scratch came about um, it was created by a guy called Gerard Beekman's uh, the next link, audience. So some information there about who the intended audience is. Target architectures, primarily 32-bit um, and 64-bit Intel stroke AMD architectures. And it says here to, to use existing Linux system, such as Ubuntu Red Hat. Well, as I say, these... These other ones actually do require you to do some work to get a full um, environment where you can compile stuff with, which is why I recommend Endeavor OS or primarily the Gen 2 um, distribution because everything's there that you need. You won't need to do anything to the live CD. Um, 
and also if you're on a machine with not very much memory then having to install extra packages means that that memory is going to be used up a little bit by the packages being installed because you're not using a disk to install these packages you're everything's running out of the memory such as, as this environment is it's running within the memory that's on the machine so if you are on a machine with limited memory then um, having a, a, a distribution with these packages already installed means that you're less likely to come across problems with uh, lack of memory and that gives here some times for installing Linux Scratch 9.1 on a Haswell based i7 Intel i7 and they've got here approximately four hours for each of them you can see there's not a lot of difference there's a bit more of a difference between the build size um, but it's you know kind of a bit of a moot point really these days everybody's going 64 bit 32 bit is starting to get abandoned with some distributions um, so chances are unless you've got quite an old machine chances are going to be doing 64 bit certainly what I'll be building here is a 64 bit version um, just for reference um, I've built this on a an order lake i9 processor 2900 and purely the, the extracting and the compiling takes it, it depends on whether it's on a mechanical hard disk or a SSD but it's between 30 minutes and an hour or so it's that sort of time so the actual compilation part of it is you know that sort of time um, but the type, when you're doing it manually typing commands it's going to take a lot longer I reckon you couldn't do it any quicker than four hours on the fastest machine available um, because of all the manual work that's involved and certainly on this machine it's probably going to take the best part of the day if not you know more than a day to, to compile um, especially uh, if you're running the tests in the chapter 8 part which is the final part uh, which I recommend and which I'll mention again when we come to that prerequisites well obviously you need a PC you need a uh, Linux distribution to act as a host and there's some more information there about building Linux and there's some more information about there about the standards and which standards are adhered to and used so it's quite interesting it gives a reason why they do things you might think well what's the point of installing that and it is to try and make Linux from scratch adhere to a standard and again here's the rationale for using certain packages so they try to keep the packages to the minimum on Linux from scratch but where they have to they'll install other packages for example um, I believe in the early days of Linux from scratch from what I can remember Python never used to be part of the build but it became apparent at some point that Python was needed so now it is actually part of the build topography so it goes to explain here how the layout and the type of fonts that are used uh, indicate what's to be done so in boxes like this with bold um, this is telling you this is what you need to type at the terminal um, then you might see this where one command has split, been split over two lines and that's indicated by this backslash which tells the bash prompt that this command carries on on the next line so that's important um, so this is showing you the output of a command on a terminal so it's not something you type in it's showing you the result of something that you'll see then there are these box outs which show notes or warnings and there's a form here where configuration files are, cr are created so this is the actual command to start creating the, the configuration file this is the contents of what will appear inside the configuration file and then this EOF terminates that, that command there 
indicates the end of the content. So after running this command, you'd have a file called group in the etc directory, which is in the um, whatever directory the LFS variable points at, and that file will have this content. Um, this shows what text needs to be replaced, so you need to type in something meaningful uh, in the text where this appears. So it might say, uh, for example, uh, host name, for example. So you'd everything from and including the angle brackets, you'd replace with the host name, for example. Again, everything between square brackets in italics is optional. So you could leave it, obviously you'd have to leave it blank because you wouldn't want to type in optional text in square brackets, or you'd replace it with something meaningful. And as is pretty standard, uh, sometimes man pages, the manual pages are referred to, and it shows you what chapter uh, or what section uh, inside the manual pages to refer to and it shows you there how to access that there as well so we could type this command in to get to the section 5 of the password and you can see it's loaded there I'm not sure if that's different from the normal that looks I think it looks the same was it no it is actually different yeah so it's a different section of the yeah that's that's the first section there of the password manual so this lays out the structure of the book it's split into parts and then the whole book is split into chapters which spread across these parts so the introduction which is the part we're in at the moment preparing for the build which is uh, preparing the disk downloading packages and starting the compiling third part is quite important where we create a, something called a cross chain cross tool chain which is used to build the final LFS system which is the bulk of the book and which is most of what part four is about. And then part five is references, load of uh, appendices with references to the commands and so on and the packages that have been installed. So yeah, the next bit is about the um, errata, if there's any errata we've seen that there isn't and any security adv advisories that may be in effect. So. Part one, the introduction, let's cover that now. And just keep clicking next to make sure we cover everything. It goes through what each chapter covers in a bit more detail. So these are all the packages that have been upgraded. So you can see it's probably near enough all of them. Some packages barely get an upgrade. For example, make barely gets upgraded. You can see that's not there. Um, the make has probably come to a point where it's near enough perfect and any changes would be you know very rare bugs or maybe tweaks to cater for some update in another package that make relies on um, there's this new wheel package which appears to have been a python package we could make out but we'll see that when we come to it that's been added to the book there's a new patch for z standard and three packages that have been removed you can see these are well two of them are upstream fixes one's a fix to the kernel for system d250 um, so they've been removed they look like in fact these two look like they'd only be of concern if you're building system d and there's a change log if you're interested to see what's happened since the last version So resources, if you've got any questions, there's some frequently asked questions at this link here. There's mailing lists you can join uh, for development as well as help. There's a relay chat uh, for accessing, you know, asking questions and 
there are mirror sites as well for downloading packages um, as you may see from my channel on YouTube uh, I do try to help if people ask questions I'm, I'm not an expert at Linux from scratch so uh, you may ask a question that, that I don't know um, you are probably better off asking the Linux from scratch team or searching on Google um, or even you know, asking in one of the many fora that are available for asking Linux related questions um, generally if you do get a problem it's and I, I've, I know this from experience my own experience myself you've missed out a command somewhere or you've skipped something um, and what you need to do is to retrace your steps and try and identify what you've missed or what you've done incorrectly um, it might be that you've missed one command on the page or what can happen is that you copy and paste a command so for example if I copy and pasted this paragraph um, I might copy and paste that bit but I don't know if you can notice I've actually missed a full stop now that full stop could be extremely important to the command it could be as subtle as that um, and if you can't identify what you've done wrong then the best thing is normally to start all over again from scratch and I know that might sound tedious but a lot of what is done is done um, for stuff you do further on down the line so if you make a mistake on a package uh, early on and you don't identify that mistake it comes out later on that another package that relies on that package you installed that you made the mistake on doesn't work because of that mistake you made then that's why it's important to go back and retrace your steps because you don't know what effect that mistake has made on packages further on down the line so unless you can retrace your steps it's generally better to reinstall from scratch again, just start all over right from scratch. Even going back to wiping the disk, um, if, for example, you're in the last chapter eight, the, the, the final bit where you build the bulk of the Linux from scratch system, you come across a problem there and you can identify that the problem was in an earlier part, say, for example, the temporary tools then you might be able to get away with rebuilding that package that you made a mistake on in, in the temporary tools part and then restarting chapter 8 right from the beginning. You may be able to carry on from that. But it is risky carrying on, so it does tend to be better that if you can re restart the whole process right from the beginning. And you will find that I'll tend to suggest that to people when they ask for help if, if it's not obvious what they've done wrong and they can't find out what they've done wrong um, it's it's the safest thing to do there'll be nothing worse than you getting a problem trying to fix it the package builds you move on a couple of packages and something else breaks and you continually come across patch packages you're breaking all down to one package that was incorrectly built or installed really early on it would save you a lot more time and another side effect of restarting from the beginning is that you're going to be learning the stuff uh, in the Linux from scratch book again you, you'll be going over it again you'll be learning it a bit more and that's got to be a good thing and and the early stuff is the important stuff because it's more complicated stuff once you get into chapter 8 you're just following the each chapter each package just installing it um, so the the critical parts are the early parts um, once you've got over that if you're in chapter 8 and everything's running smoothly chances are the rest of it's going to run smoothly as long as obviously you install those packages correctly uh, so yeah it is good to go back again redo it relearn it the more times you do it the more you'll understand how everything works and who knows you could identify where you made the mistake and you think oh i didn't do that bit or i did that bit differently so yeah don't think of it as a waste of time having to redo everything think of it as a another learning opportunity Uh, yeah, so there's more information about help there. There's some links for common errors and uh, facts and so on. This is important. What to mention when you do get the error, the types, types of things to um, you know, quote the error. Uh, it shows you like um, if you get an error like this, then that's what you need to quote. Don't just quote the last bit, error one, because that, that means nothing. 
you do need to quote a little bit more to show what command was run um, and the trace back. Um, and this is quite a good article here about how to ask good questions. And if you ask a good question, you're going to get a good answer. If you just start, for example, say, oh, it broke. Well, you're going to get, a, you know, either, you're either going to get ignored or you're going to get some pithy comment that you won't be happy with. Or at best, you'll get, well, can you give us an error? Can you can you paste an error in? So the better the question is, the, the better um, the answer is going to be. And also show that you've done a bit of research as well. If you've done no research, then that means you're expecting other people to do the work for you. And, you know, people are busy um, and they're less likely to help you if you can show that you've done some research. And it helps showing the people who read your problem. Oh, right. OK, they've tried that. I was going to suggest that, but they've tried that. So I don't need to suggest that. I'll suggest something else. Um, so it, it certainly does help to ask the right question.